guys, I am here to do the much requested tattoo tour. So I'm gonna go through all of my tattoos. I'll talk a little bit about what they are and why I got them. And I'm just gonna go from top to bottom because I honestly don't remember the order that I got my tattoos in. So let's just jump right into it. First things first, I have the side of my head tattooed here. I obviously can't show it to you because I now have hair there, but I used to have my head shaved and that's when I got it done. I'll insert a picture right here. It is just three snakes. This is my interpretation of a Medusa tattoo. I felt like Medusa's bust was a little bit overdone, so I wanted to do something a little bit more unique. So I decided to get snakes on my head and kind of mimic the fact that she has snakes on her head. I got this tattoo because I really like and resonate with the feminist reinterpretation of the Medusa myth, where she is vilified simply for being sexual and owning her power. And and using that and I think that that is something that me as a successful OnlyFans creator can really relate to just this idea of you know something not being bad or not being your fault and still becoming the villain in everybody's story because of it. Next I have my spine tattoo and it looks like this so it goes from the base of my neck about here all the way down to like right above my butt crack and there is no special meaning to that tattoo. I honestly got it done because I was scrolling through Tumblr and <laughs> I saw this really, really attractive alt model and she was just like posted there and so I I just thought she was like the hottest thing I'd ever seen. And I reverse Google searched the image and found that she was actually a tattoo artist. And when I went to her Instagram page, I found that I really liked her work. All of my tattoos are black work and she's exclusively a black work tattooer. Her style was just perfect for me. And I just thought that a spine would be a really great tattoo to get done in her style. And I was right. It looks fucking awesome. It's one of my favorite tattoos, but there's no special meaning to it. I just thought that it would look cool. Next on the front, I have this goat tattoo. It is Baphomet. A lot of people ask me if I'm an Aries or a Capricorn or whatever and the answer is no, I am not. I'm actually a Virgo um, and I also don't really subscribe to astrology but this is a Baphomet tattoo. I got it because I like that the goat and this idea of Baphomet have become symbols of being anti-Christian or associated with like demonic symbolism. And I know that's not the origin of the Baphomet tattoo, but like in pop culture, it just has become kind of synonymous with like the devil or some sort of like antithesis to God or Christ. And I also just think that a goat just works with my anatomy here really well, the way that the horns wrap around my neck and then it kind of like narrows out just as my chest kind of goes in like that. And the reason that I got this tattoo done was because I was born and raised Christian and I feel like I got to witness firsthand a lot of really toxic things that Christianity has brought to not only my personal life but to the world in terms of like very archaic ways of thinking about women about marriage about what the role of sex should be in people's lives and even like more modern day issues like trans rights and abortion access and you know just like institutionalizing child abuse where all of these priests and stuff have been put in these positions of power where they can abuse children. And, and I am really against it. I think that it has done more bad than good in the world. And so I wanted to get something to symbolize my journey with religion. And so getting something that was sort of like the opposite of Christianity, I thought would be a really fun way to do that. 
And so, yeah, I got this giant fucking goat on my chest. So I'm just gonna go down my arm now. Oh, actually, I forgot about this one because it's covered by my goat tattoo. This one used to say, I lose myself in books. I find myself there too. And it's actually in the font that the Harry Potter books are written in because I love those books. And I feel like that was a big part of my life when I was growing up. I was pretty socially awkward growing up. And I feel like I found a lot of my friends online through the Harry Potter fandom. Growing up, I got more and more into reading different philosophical schools of thought and different views on the world. And I don't know, I just feel like I devoured books when I was younger and the different ways that the world was presented to me and the different ways that I could think about the world really influenced the way that I thought and was able to process information. And so I thought that that was like a really nice quote to symbolize my love of reading. So now I'm gonna go into my arms. So this is the Tangled Sun with a little bit of extra stuff. But Tangled is basically my favorite Disney movie, one of my favorite Disney movies. And I just really like the sun. I thought it would look cool on my shoulder just with my like, anatomy and then this one is there's no special meaning to this people always ask me what 13 means 13 doesn't mean anything special it just means that i got it on friday the 13th and it was 31 dollars a lot of my tattoos are i thought this would look cool here like this jackalope here i had this tattoo and this tattoo down here and so I had this big empty space and I wanted to fill it with like an animal and I couldn't decide what animal to get. I wanted something like long so it would fill the space of my arm really well. And I was waffling between like a deer and a bunny because those are both really like long animals. My tattoo artist was like, why don't you just combine it and get a jackalope? So now I have a bunny with antlers on my arm. And then I mentioned these two tattoos. This tattoo says absurdum and that is Latin for absurdity. That is part of a phrase reductio ad absurdum, which is for those of you who aren't in logic or math, it is basically a proof strategy where you try and prove your conclusion by assuming the opposite of your set of starting premises and then showing that assuming the opposite leads to a contradiction. So basically you're saying, there's no way that the opposite of this could be true because if it were, then it would lead us to a contradiction. So obviously the not opposite has to be true, if that makes sense. So I used to study philosophy. That was what I majored in. My focus was in ethics, but I studied all of it. And philosophy was really eye-opening for me. I feel like it challenged a lot of my beliefs by taking a lot of intuitions that I had and just like really commonly held assumptions and basically like pushing them as far as they could go to show me that like we had a lot of like deep set inconsistencies about the way that we live and act and think and I feel like just that idea was very eye-opening for me and it made me question a lot of what I had previously just taken for granted and I felt like I don't know this proof strategy <laughs> represents that really well and I just wanted to get some sort of tattoo to commemorate that love in my life of studying philosophy and ethics and different ways of thinking. And then I have this pizza tattoo which is not part of this jackalope tattoo and I used to work at a pizza shop when I was in undergrad and we all got pizza tattoos. So that's a pizza tattoo. And then I have this the other one that I mentioned that I had back when I only had these two before I got the jackalope in. And this is just a tattoo of a hair tie. You can tell it's like the exact same like width. And this one has to do with my time taking martial arts. When I did martial arts, I had a lot of trouble remembering my left and right. I honestly still do, but my instructor gave me his ponytail and put it on my left hand and told me that that's how I should remember. And I don't know, ever since then I like had a ponytail on my left hand and it just kind of like stayed with me that way all through the rest of my martial arts career, like through my black belt tests and as I was teaching, like it just, I just always had a little, you know, I had a hair tie on my left wrist and martial arts was like a huge part of my life growing up before I moved away to start college. I spent more time in the studio training with my teammates than I did 
at like home and school combined. And it really shaped a lot of who I was growing up in my really formative years of childhood. And so I wanted to get something to remind me of that, especially after I left and had to stop to go to college. And so yeah, that's my little hair tie tattoo. And then I have the word sissy here right above my hair tie, the little heart. It's written in my sister's handwriting and she has the same tattoo in the same place but in my handwriting because we call each other sissy and she is one of my best friends and we haven't lived in the same state for like a long time now. She's my best friend and we talk a lot but we don't get to see each other as often as we used to and so we wanted to get tattoos for each other. So that's, that's my arm, I think. That's my whole arm. And then here I have a tattoo. I got this before I got this whole like bird, but it's right along here and it says, do not go gentle. It is in my own handwriting and it's from a poem by Dylan Thomas called Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night. It's basically a reminder to myself to not take anything sitting down and to not let people walk all over me and to always speak my mind. So that was definitely something that I had a problem with growing up. If you know anything about me, it's obviously not something that I have a problem with today. If you follow me on any of my social media, you'll know that, but it is a reminder to myself that I need to remember that I have a voice and to speak up when I feel like I need to. And then next, I have this tattoo. This is all one tattoo. This is my Harry Potter tattoo. So I am in Ravenclaw. I had my brother design this. I wanted something that incorporated Ravenclaw's diadem, which is this thing here at the bottom, and then also the house symbol, which is a raven, so that's this thing. And he took this from Pottermore, except for this little gem here, which is from the original diadem. It's just a little bit like rearranged and reinterpreted. So this is my stomach piece. My dad actually got this piece for me as a graduation present from college. Next, I have this tattoo here. It's basically, it's like really old. This is the very first tattoo that I got but it's basically a little princess crown with Mickey Mouse in the center. This princess crown is modeled off of one of the very first Disney trading pins that I got. And that was my first tattoo. I turned 18 and I really wanted to get something and I didn't know what I wanted to get. So I got something relatively simple in a place that was easy to hide and something I knew I wouldn't regret. And I've loved Disney my whole life. It really brings me back to my childhood because we owned all of the Disney tapes on VHS and I would watch them over and over with my siblings and going to the parks even today is just like, it makes me so happy. So that's my little Disney tattoo. Next I have, I'm not gonna show it to you cause I don't wanna flash YouTube, but I have, a little candy heart right here on my butt cheek. It says GRLPWR, girl power, and I got it on a whim one International Women's Day several years ago, because I was just like, fuck it, why not? And I thought it would look cute on my ass, and it does. And lastly, I have this tattoo, which I'm going to need to stand up again to show you, and it's right here. So I minored in astrophysics as an undergrad, not for any particular reason. I just thought space was cool and I wanted to learn more about it. One thing that I really, really liked about Carl Sagan was his popularization of astrophysics. I think he did a really good job of bringing really complex scientific physical theories to the general public and that is something that I am really really passionate about. That's actually one of the reasons I left academia is because I felt like it was too elitist and Carl Sagan was actually one of the people who helped to design the Pulsar Star map that I got tattooed. Basically what that map is is a map of where we are in the universe relative to a bunch of different pulsar stars. I'm not gonna get too much into it because I don't want this to turn into an astrophysics lesson, but basically because of the way that pulsar stars work, it's really easy for us to figure out where they are in the universe and in the sky. And so this is a map of where we are and at the very center where all of the lines crisscross, that's that's our place, that's our solar system. You stuck around for this whole video, congratulations. I'm very flattered that you were so curious as to learn about all of my tattoos. And I hope that you enjoyed watching and learning a little bit more about me.